Autumn always represents a time of transition here in the fish tank barn. I really focus on some of the fun parts of fish keeping, like breeding and raising fry. So with all that being said, I think it's time for another fish room tour. So let's go ahead and kick this tour off with uh, the largest tank here in the fish tank barn. Uh, this is home to my 245-gallon uh, South American cichlid tank. Uh, this tank has my DIY foam background. Uh, it also has uh, some driftwood for the aquascaping. Uh, we are running a little bit of a test on this tank. We are playing around with the Aquarium Co-op Easy Planner. Uh, running a little bit of an experiment with that and see if we can get some plants into this tank. And uh, so far it's going well. It's been a couple weeks and uh, so far so good. Fish-wise in this tank we have the uh, Geophagus Altifrons. Uh, definitely a really fun fish. Uh, next up is the Geophagus Heckeli. I really do enjoy the speckling on the Geophagus Heckeli. Uh, next up we have the uh, Red Shoulder Severum. So I did get this pair in Chicago from uh, Pleco Paradise. Uh, so I've had these fish now for a couple years. And they've been a real fun addition here to the fish tank barn. All right, the last fish we're going to talk about here is the Mesoheros Ultramaculatus. Uh, this fish is starting to grow up quite a bit. Uh, we are starting to see a little bit of red on the fins. So uh, if this fish I got at the big fish deal back in March. Uh, so it's not been in here for too long, but uh, really excited to see it develop. Up next, we come to my 40-gallon breeder. Uh, this tank is home to my Therichthys maculopinus. Uh, these are definitely some pretty cool-looking fish. Uh, they are related to the Firemouth cichlid. Uh, they were living in the 245-gallon at one point before it was redone, but they are coming into their own here uh, in this 40-gallon breeder. I am again playing with the Easy Planters in this tank. I recently aquascaped this tank uh, with a piece of driftwood that I had here in the fish tank barn. Uh, along with some new pieces to accent it uh, that I picked up from keepfishkeeping.com. So uh, really happy with how this tank turned out. Uh, these guys are sharing their tank with a group of white and black skirt tetras uh, and uh, one rather old uh, candy cane tetra as well. So the next 40 breeder we come to is home to the Ysochromis uh, JCP2 Blue Tipped Victorian. Uh, the male you're looking at right here has some very nice red markings on its fin. Uh, these are a rather rare uh, Victorian cichlid. Uh, you would just care for these guys like you would any of the other Victorian cichlids. The next tank we come to here is my 20 gallon long. Uh, so this is one of the tanks I got from Jimmy. I actually did keep the aquascaping the same. Uh, but this tank is home to a ton of cherry shrimp. As well as some pretty cool looking mutt endlers. Uh, they are definitely uh, quite a nice looking fish. Actually some of my favorite fish here in the fish room. We now come to another one of my favorite tanks. Uh, it's home to the uh, Antinobius Towerai, uh, which is known as the Blue-Tailed Gidead. And also home to some Variatus platys, uh, which are really some cool, nice, uh, really good fish. Um, actually a really good fish to start out with if you're a beginner. Uh, can handle a wide variety of temperature ranges. Uh, this tank actually is pretty well aquascaped as well. And uh, just a lot of fun to look at. Next up, we come to my 125-gallon Lake Tanganyikan tank. Uh, this tank is home to the uh, Cyprochromis yellowhead in Conde, as well as the Lamprologus ornatopinus. Definitely going to look to add to both of these colonies. Definitely starting to see some black markings on the Cyprochromis. This tank does have quite a bit of jungle valve, which you'll also see in many other parts of the fish room. I am looking forward to this tank in a year or two uh, to really see how these fish develop and uh, really get this colony going. We are heading over now to my other 125 gallon tank. Uh, this is my uh, mixed African cichlid tank. Uh, this tank is home to mostly Imbuna. Uh, we do have the yellow Labradochromis, uh, otherwise known as the yellow labs, as well as the purple ACI. Uh, I've had both of these fish since uh, 2017, so they probably are at this point uh, some of the oldest fish here in the fish tank barn. Uh, we also do have a couple of peacocks in this tank. Uh, we have a pretty nice looking OB peacock, as well as a uh, cobalt blue peacock. Uh, we actually do have some of the fry from this fish in here as well. Uh, we will see some of the grout stuff later, uh, but we did put some of the fry back in here. 
uh, to keep these colonies going. One thing I really do like about this tank is I am able to keep plants. I do keep quite a bit of jungle val in here. And uh, while the cichlids may pick at it some, uh, it does seem to work out pretty well. Uh, one of the methods I have used for this is adding the plants first and the cichlids later. And that seems to work out quite well in this tank. Uh, moving to the 40 gallon breeders that are above here, uh, we come to the uh, Xiphophorus calvani or the calvani swordtails. Uh, we do have quite a few fry of these guys as well. Uh, this tank is pretty much a uh, Valisneria jungle, uh, which provides a lot of great cover for the fry. Uh, they have, guys have been pretty prolific and uh, doing quite well. Uh, heading on to the next tank here, uh, we do have the uh, Xiphophorus clemenciae. Uh, these guys do have a very specific location. Uh, also living in here are some plecos, and we have been actually lucky enough to get some pleco fry as well. Uh, you know, kind of talking about some new beginnings and a little bit of new direction here in the fish tank barn. Plecos are definitely one of the things that's going to be on my list to uh, get a little bit better at breeding. All right, heading onwards now, uh, we are now at looking at my Gerardus Metallicus group. Uh, these guys are still in their 37 gallon cube. I uh, just switched locations a little bit here in the fish tank barn. Uh, these guys have been pretty prolific spawners, uh, so we are getting quite a few fry from these. Uh, also sitting in the background, uh, you do see some blue dream shrimp, which is definitely a, another species I am interested to get going here in the fish tank barn. Up next here, we do have my red spot endlers. I did pick these up back in May. And uh, pretty happy to report I am seeing some fry. Uh, I did switch these guys around location-wise. But uh, these fish are doing great and uh, really happy with how they've turned out. I did end up with a few more males and females. But uh, hopefully that will even out over time. Heading over to the uh, next tank here. These are the uh, Pocilia Obscura. Uh, these are from Rio La Siva. They are very similar to guppies. Um, I did have some fry from these, but as well I did get... Uh, some at the uh, Michiana Aquarium Society auction. All right, moving onwards now, we are looking at the uh, Black Prince Gideon, otherwise known as the Krakadon Audax. Unfortunately, I only have one of these, uh, but we'll definitely look to add some more here in the future. All right, heading onward now, we are heading over to the 75-gallon discus tank. The discus have had a little bit of a rough go of it. Uh, they are fighting a little bit of fin rot, so we are treating that with some Marison and treating that with some Ickax. Uh, but the one thing I am really excited about in here, the Cardinal Tetras have gotten huge, and I'm really looking forward to getting the discus back on the up and up. Next up, we have the Tuxedo Guppies. Uh, these are an alumni from the summer chubbing season. Uh, fortunately, we did lose the adult fish uh, to the frogs that were in the pond. But these fish are doing quite well, and uh, looking forward to getting a nice colony going. Uh, next up here, we do have the Super Dumbo Dragon Guppies. Uh, you can see one really stunning male here, and then uh, a few other males with a little bit blacker tails. Another uh, Summer Tub alumni, and uh, let's get this colony going as well. All right, we did move the Madaka Rice Fish down here uh, to this 55 gallon that's uh, on the floor here. I've uh, got a ton of guppy grass in here. Uh, really hoping to colony breed these guys and get them uh, spawning here in the guppy grass. Heading onwards now, we are looking at the mutt guppy pond. Uh, so this is kind of what happened to the mutt guppy tank. Uh, basically decided to put it into a pond. Uh, this has both the mutt guppies, some cherry shrimp, and uh, the bumblebee platies. Uh, next up here is my 90 gallon tank with the Trophius Red Bemba. We did move them from the 55 gallon in the other side of the room. Uh, seem to be a lot happier here with the lighter substrate. Uh, we did pick these guys up at the Big Fish deal back in March. I'm also playing with the Tidal Filter. Uh, running a little bit of testing on it to see how I feel about it. Uh, so definitely looking forward to uh, see how that turns out. Let's head over to the 5 gallon Fry Rack. Uh, there are a couple of highlights here. Uh, we do have the uh, Pseudotrophius Interruptus Chismulu. Uh, these guys are definitely ready to go to a bigger tank. Also, we have this group of Yellow Labs, uh, which also is going to get moved uh, to a bigger tank upstairs as well. 
Moving onwards now, we do have the adults for the Pseudotrophius Interruptus Chismulu. Uh, you can see here the electric blue male, and then you have the yellow females. They've basically decided to split the tank in half. Uh, one male has one side, one male has the other, and that uh, seems to be working out well. All right, we now come to my 90-gallon tank. Uh, this is home to uh, the Xenotoka Variata, or the Jeweled Gideon. And also in here are some Black Berlin Swordtails. And uh, they are a little bit tiny and kind of blend in with the Gideons, but we do also have uh, some Melanotania species uh, Wallace Road. Uh, so we'll go ahead and see if we can find some of those guys. And uh, see one, see them right there. You got to kind of check out the uh, finish and everything, but uh, there we got one right there. So looking forward to seeing these guys grow up for sure. And uh, got quite a few plants in here as well from Valisneria, uh, Jungle Val, and Crypt Wind that I read. Next up is the 120 gallon uh, mixed tank with, uh, we've got some Gadeads in here again. Uh, we have the uh, Capelixes and Caustus. Uh, also, we do have some Gold Dust Mollies. And uh, to round this tank out, we do have uh, four Goiter River Rainbow Fish. Uh, we did get these from Jimmy uh, from the Aquarium Co-op. Uh, over the 4th of July weekend when we moved. But uh, this is really one of my favorite tanks. All right, moving right along now, we do have the Orange Swordtails. I did pick these up at the Michiana Aquarium Society uh, back in September. And uh, these guys are doing pretty well. I uh, really wanted to get some more Orange Swordtails back in the barn. Uh, one thing you can definitely see here is the uh, later developing male. The bigger fish here with the start of the sword, uh, something you would call like a late developing male. And uh, that's why you kind of want to keep an eye on your early developing versus late developing males uh, when you're talking sword tails. But uh, really excited to get this fish breeding and uh, get it going. We now come to my 54 gallon bow front. Uh, this is home to my Amica Splendence colony. Uh, these are some of the oldest Gadeads that I've kept in the fish room. Uh, they did suffer a little bit of a setback a while back with some fungus issues, but I've uh, got them straightened out now, and uh, they're on the up and up. Also in here, we do have a group of Melanotania sahulensis Skull Creek. I did pick them up at the Michigan Aquarium Society, uh, but they are quite small and uh, a little bit hard to find in here. But uh, really excited to see these guys grow up as well. Uh, the next tank we come to here is the Gadea atropinus. Uh, this is another 40-gallon breeder. Uh, these guys are another veteran of the summer tubs. Also in here are some turquoise guppies uh, that they were living with in the summer tubs as well. Uh, I did lose my big female, uh, but she did bless us with quite a few fry. So uh, looking forward to getting this colony jump started again and getting it on its way. Before heading upstairs, we do have one last tank to check out. Uh, this is the 55 gallon that the uh, Trophius Red Bamba were living in. And uh, we've decided now to put the uh, Limia Peruse group from upstairs in here and uh, definitely looking good. I uh, really enjoy having these guys here and uh, they've settled in quite nicely. I have seen another drop of fry. Really looking forward to getting this Lemia going and uh, growing this colony up. All right, we now come to the top of the stairs. Uh, the first tank you come to here is home to my 75 gallon. Uh, this tank is home to some more mollies. Uh, also home to the Montezuma Swordtails, uh, which are actually some of my favorite fish here in the fish tank barn. It is also home to the Melanotania Bozmani Aves Creek and also some plecos. Uh, you can see a pleco here is actually caved up and uh, we do have some baby plecos that float around here from time to time as well. So another one of my favorite tanks here. All right, up next, uh, just kitty corner, we do have my 29 gallon. Uh, this is home to the Santa Maria Endlers. Also in this tank, we do have a group of Melanotania Precox. Uh, really looking forward to getting the Precox to spawn in the guppy grass. So we also have in here some more cherry shrimp. Heading to the bottom 29 gallon tank, uh, we do have another Gadead species, the Xenotania resolani, or the Leopard Gadead. This fish I did get as fry, but now we've actually completed the cycle and uh, we do have those fish getting fry of their own. So another tank I am pretty happy with. We're now looking at my 54 gallon bow front. Uh, this is home to the uh, Laticara curviceps, uh, as well as a lone angel fish, which used to be my uh, male breeder in my breeding pair, but unfortunately lost the female. Uh, also in here are some coral platies. 
But this is definitely a tank I do enjoy, and uh, this tank's come a long way. The next tank is home to the Xenotoka Lion's Eye. Uh, these guys are doing quite well and are very prolific breeders, and I uh, have been since I've gotten them. Uh, we did make an addition to this tank recently. Uh, we did add the Florida Flagfish in here as well. So uh, looking forward to getting these little killifish going as well. We're now heading over to the Clownfish breeding setup. Uh, the first tank we're looking at here is home to the Amphiprion alardi, or the Allard's Clownfish. This fish is native to Africa and uh, really one of my favorite species. Next up are my Snowflake Ocellaris pair. Uh, these were the original pair that spawned in the fish barn. Uh, next after that, we are looking at the uh, Black Snowflakes. Uh, then the Lightning Maroon. And uh, ending it up here with the Tomato Clown. So one of the things I really do like uh, using in these tanks is the Zis Filter. It uh, provides some great biological filtration for these uh, small clownfish breeding setups. Up next, we have a 20-gallon uh, high, uh, which is home to the Vienna guppies. Um, I got these from Jimmy, uh, but these are the same guppies that Corey took back uh, from the Vienna Guppy World Championships. Uh, next up here is the Priaprichthes nigro ventralis. Uh, this is a little live-bearing species from Colombia. It has a very beautiful blue eye, much like a Norman's Lampi Killy, uh, but is a nice little prolific live bear, and one we should really see more often in the hobby. Heading over to the next tank in this rack, these are the Epistogramma cockatoides. I've got a group of four in here. I've not seen any breeding from these yet, but we'll go ahead and keep plugging away at them. Up next, we have the Xenophallus umbratilis. This is another uh, little micro live bear. that uh, comes from Arenal Volcano in Colombia. But another one that's a uh, pretty nice little rare fish that uh, we should see more of. All right, the next fish we come to here is the Tiger Teddy, or the Neoheterandria elegans. Uh, this is a nice little micro live bear, a little bit hard to video, but the males have some really nice tiger looking stripes and uh, females aren't too bad looking as well. Uh, next up here we come to uh, what I'm going to call as my group of bettas for right now. I can't really say it's a sorority, but uh, this is a nice group of placot bettas that I did pick up at the uh, Michiana Aquarium Society. I am floating some driftwood in the top. And we're just waiting for that to sink, and then we'll get this uh, aquascape done on its way. Moving onwards now, we do have the least killifish, or the Neoheterandria formosa. Uh, this was another veteran of the summer tubs. Uh, they definitely were prolific. But uh, yeah, really looking forward to just uh, getting this colony growing and uh, having it on its way. Next addition here is a nice group of Aresius warre. Uh, these are a new addition to the barn. Another fish I picked up at the Michiana Aquarium Society auction. Got a couple of nice adults and uh, quite a few juveniles. So uh, really enjoying these fish and uh, really looking forward to getting them grown up. So moving onwards now, uh, we do have the Black Bar Endlers. Uh, this is another uh, pretty common endler strain, but uh, another prolific endler species. And uh, really enjoy endlers as one of the great beginner fish in the hobby. Next up here is the Gold Delta Guppies. I actually did pick these up at the Michigan IFGA Guppy Show. I do have probably about two males, two females in here still. And we're just looking to build this colony back up. All right, we have another favorite of mine here. Uh, these are the Limia Negro Fasciata. Uh, these guys have been quick breeders in the fish tank barn. Uh, they put on quite a bit of size and uh, growing up quite nicely. But uh, one thing I have found with Limias, it is really important to keep them warm. Uh, if you do let them get too cold, they do uh, tend to fall apart on you. But uh, really fun species and uh, really happy to get these guys going. Uh, now moving on to the next 29 gallon tank. This is really one of my favorite Limia species. Uh, this is the Limia melanogaster. Uh, females and males are both very colorful. Females have a really big dark gravid spot. And then uh, your males will be kind of a yellow color with some black striping on it. And this is an absolutely gorgeous wild type fish. All right, we now come to the next 29 gallon tank. Uh, this is home to my Xiphophorus Nuzahua Lacoidal. And uh, these are some pretty interesting small little sword tails. I uh, do prefer a little bit cooler water. And I am looking forward to getting some fry from these and really getting a good colony going. Uh, they did get these from fry back in May. 
and uh, they are growing up quite nicely. So uh, soon enough, we definitely will see some fry from these guys and uh, get this colony going. All right, next up here, we do have my Blackwater Rainbow Fish Tank. Uh, so this is home to the Melanotania species Kali Timbuni. I did pick these up from Dan's Fish uh, a couple months ago. And these fish have made great additions to the fish tank barn and really enjoyed them. I'm uh, really interested to see these guys grow up. And uh, hopefully we'll get some spawning mops in here soon and get some fry going. Next up, we probably have one of my favorite tanks here in the fish tank barn. This is the 75-gallon Lake Tanganyika Shell Dweller Tank. Uh, this is home to some Daffodil Burchardi. Uh, also home to some Neolamprologus similis. We have seen quite a few fry in here. Uh, we do have a variety of sizes, uh, so definitely very prolific. Uh, there's some really tiny ones and uh, some that are a little bit more grown up. But this tank is literally like a little city. Uh, basically, you know, similis moving sand around, uh, Lamprologus kind of hanging out in the corners. But uh, really a fun tank. There's always something going on and it's always changing, which really makes it a lot of fun. All right, next up here, we do have a 29 gallon. Uh, this is home to the Indian rice fish. Uh, these are a warmer water rice fish species. I did pick these up from Dan's fish as well. Uh, definitely a beautiful uh, little fish and uh, definitely have been seeing some fry in here as well. Uh, so I really love it when I can colony breed fish and really not to have to do a ton of work to breed them. So. Uh, definitely looking forward to uh, getting this colony going as well. Uh, I know we've said this quite a few times now. And uh, we'll get these out to some of my fish keeping friends. All right, we now come to another Gidean species here. Uh, these are the Capilixes pardalis, uh, much related to the Capilixes and Caustus that we saw earlier. Uh, this was a fish I picked up earlier this year at a swap in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And uh, as you can see here, we do have some fry in this tank as well. Uh, there is actually a Lone Ranger guppy that's rolling around in here as well. Uh, we'll have to catch him and uh, get him with all of his other guppy tank mates. Uh, even though he won't interbreed with the Gidea, it's, it's pretty good to keep your fish separate uh, if you're working on breeding projects. As we keep moving on here, uh, another 29 gallon tank. Uh, this is home to some of my favorite guppies here in the fish room. Uh, these are the Horatio Dominguez guppies. Uh, these were a line that I picked up at the Ohio Cichlid Association auction last year. Uh, actually came from Rusty Wessel, so definitely a pretty cool fish. Uh, really glad to have them and uh, kind of a neat addition here to the fish tank barn. As you can see, they have been pretty prolific, uh, leaving me with quite a few fry. So uh, definitely these will be coming out to the auctions once the auction season starts. All right, uh, moving right along here. Uh, these are the Xiphophorus birchmani. Another fish I did pick up from Aquabit is fry uh, back in May. But uh, these guys have been growing up quite nicely. Uh, this tank does need a little bit of aquascaping work, uh, which we will get to here quite quickly. And uh, just another fish I'm really looking forward to. Uh, heading onwards to the next tank here, we do have the Snowcross Endlers. Uh, these have been some really prolific spawners here in the fish tank barn. These ones will be definitely going out to some of my fish keeping friends. Uh, once again, once we get through um, all of the virus stuff. All right, we're now looking at my... Uh, Gold Vienna Lower Sword Guppies. Uh, these guys are in a 29 gallon as well. Uh, this is pretty much a jungle look tank. But uh, these guys were a little slow to get going, but we are now starting to see some fry. So, uh, you know, once we get these guys kind of ramped up, uh, it'll be exciting to get these guys out and uh, get them going again. We now have this 20 gallon long. Uh, it's home to the Cobra Endlers, another veteran of the summer tubs. This is another species that I've been working with for quite a while and definitely one that I enjoy and definitely one that I've been able to pass on to some of my fish keeping friends. All right, uh, heading onwards now. Uh, we're now looking at my Neolamprologus brevis sunspot. i uh, got a group of uh, two adult females and one male. And then uh, we do have quite a few fry in here. I am definitely looking forward to uh, keep on growing this colony and uh, eventually we'll get some out to uh, some of the local auctions. All right, up next here we do have the Limia Isli. Uh, these fish were just recently described. Uh, they were recently referred to as the Limia Tiger Species 44. Uh, these guys are doing quite well though. Uh, as you can see, uh, we do have some fry in here now and uh, just another uh, pretty nice colony of live bears. 
All right, the next fish we come to is a pretty cool little fish. Uh, these are the Scyphia multipunctata. Uh, one thing that's pretty cool about these fish is that the males will get a uh, spotting pattern on their sides. And this spotting pattern is different depending on the male, uh, much like a fingerprint. This fish has been a little bit challenging for me to spawn. I have seen fry from time to time, uh, but I do think either the parents are eating them or uh, something else is going on with it. Uh, so I might be moving these to a different tank in the future. But uh, this is still a fish I really do enjoy and uh, definitely a fun little good ad. All right, next up here, uh, we do have the tequila goodian, uh, Zogeneticus tequila. Uh, this is a fish that's been kind of reclusive to film here in the fish tank farm. Uh, does like to hide out quite a bit. Um, I have definitely seen a few fry running about as well. Uh, so they are definitely reproducing in here. But uh, definitely another fun, uh, really cool looking Gadad species, especially the males uh, with their very uh, pronounced orange fin. So, uh, you know, once we get these guys going, uh, we'll be good to go. And uh, really excited about this fish as well. The next fish is one that I've not really shown in the fish room. Uh, just kind of just ended up in a tank that was either hard to film or just kind of out of the way. Uh, but these are some red, white, and blue variatus platys. And uh, I really had any luck breeding them. Definitely would like to, because these are really some stunning fish. All right, uh, up next here, we do have the uh, Trophyops Comwera Conchedza Elongatus Broadzulu. I say that uh, 10 times very fast. This is another Mbuna species. Uh, these guys are pretty cool. You got the uh, darker females, and then the males will be a lighter blue color. And uh, we do have some colony breeding going on with these guys as well. Uh, you will see a few tiny fry floating around from time to time uh, in and out of the rock work. This is another fish I really do need to start stripping some females and uh, see if we can get some more fry out of them. All right, we are going to take a quick look here at the brine shrimp rearing station with the uh, Zis brine shrimp hatcheries. All right, one thing I am going to show you that we've not seen before, uh, these are the fry rearing tubs. Uh, these are just some 27-gallon uh, black toads that you get at Home Depot. Uh, so basically here we just uh, raise the fry up in here. They're like little top-down tanks. And uh, just go ahead and feed the fry. And if you can see here, uh, they really do like it. So these are actually a lot of fun to just watch the fry come out of the rock work. Uh, the particular fish in here are the purple ACI that we talked about earlier on in the tour. This is a great and inexpensive way to increase your rearing capacity. It's also a lot of fun to watch these fish from the top down view. Next up, we do have my Beta Edithae. Uh, there actually are two of them in here. Uh, one of them is being a little bit shy right now, uh, but these are a wild type mouth brooding Beta. Uh, so these guys were quite small when I got them. These guys have grown up quite a bit and uh, kind of another one here on the uh, breeding project list. Up next, we have the Panther Daniel. This is another fish that's on the uh, let's get this breeding list. A couple of the smaller fish you see in here are actually some of the fry. Well, I really do hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, we do have quite a few fish sitting in here, so definitely uh, thank you guys for coming along. Uh, so that being said, so that being said, stay safe, stay fishy. I'll catch you guys on the next video.